few months after your last successful adventure, you will have had quite a few more fun adventures and eventually you are approached by one of your more reserved middlemen, a young nobleman called Kin. Uh, he has asked you to steal an egg from a museum. He will sneak you into the city, but from there it is your responsibility to get around without being detected or discovered, to get the egg and then to return to him. He has asked you all to get into these crates and then what follows is a few hours of uncomfortable moving. You feel somewhat sick. Uh, and then eventually the crates seem to be uh, taken by humanoid hands. And you hear Kin's voice saying, yes, uh, just put them over there. Thank you. The footsteps seem to fade away and you hear the sounds of your crates being unlocked. And Kin stands before you. Hello. Hopefully the journey wasn't too rough. Uh, like, mm -hmm. what, what quality of ship are we talking? You know, first class, second class, first class signed tract? suppose you could have uh, been dealt with with a bit more care, but it was a, a, a normal freight shipment. Anything else would have drawn suspicion that there was something more important there. So sorry. Well, it doesn't end the rougher than the winds I fought against. No worries. Anyway, what are we here for? Just as you're climbing out of the crates, while Samantha and Luca are familiar with one another, could we get an introduction to uh, this new character? So, Ilda, um, the full name being Ilda the Flaming Winter, is a... Elven-ish individual, um, fairly short, but um, shortish white hair, bright red eyes, and this air of contemplation, but also lack of emotion about them. Um, as you notice that Despite having a very cold exterior, there seems to be something about them that just feels warming to be around. Um, and some interesting details that kind of make you question what they are, are the um, slightly longer tipped ears than you would see in a normal elf that seem to have um, tufts of whitish fur kind of... Um, coating around the edge, and as well as generally sharper features. And so, simply just stand there for the time. You are, of course, all welcome to stretch your legs. Um, there is some water on the bedside table over there, uh, if you desire. Also, I can't move my token. <laughs> Should be able to now. Yep. <laughs> Luca collapses in a chair dramatically. Stands up, waltzes across the room, collapses in a different chair dramatically. 
and a third chair even more dramatically. So the journey has left you feeling <laughs> quite chilly. The chair closest to the fire was comfortable for a little while until you realised that the heat was radiating outwards. And it seems that the chair that Luca is in now is the most comfortable one. Uh, Kin will say to the group, I have uh, the intel that you need whenever you are recovered from your arduous journey. I think the best place is. So, <laughs> egg. Uh, he puts down a piece of paper. We have received a floor plan from one of our agents. It's quite rough. Uh, the museum is not always open to the public. But what we have is what we have. Hmm. The quality of their note taking and handwriting is not the best, so if there's anything you need transcribed, please don't hesitate to say. It is fairly understandable. Yes, the egg is, you know it to be somewhere in the basement area probably within the vault there is a, a locking mechanism a bar that keeps the vault door shut and it is controlled by some lever on the ground floor we assume it is in the curator's office your best point of entrance would be the balcony on the upper floor the south. However, it is only secured by a basic tumbler lock, but there are guards that roam around the top floor. Thankfully, our agents have also procured invitation documents for you all. It is approximately half five, six p.m. at the moment. The museum is open in the evenings, but only to guests of the curator and the museum council. Those who hold these documents are safe from being arrested, but only on the main two floors of the museum. Once you are in the basement, you would have to find different excuses if anyone were to challenge you. And the egg, chicken size, dragon size, what the hell laid this kind of size? It's a crystalline egg. We don't believe it is a naturally occurring. We believe it to be constructed. Uh, it is about yay big. He holds his hands about like um, nine inches apart, uh, top to bottom. The size of an ostrich, almost. Once you have retrieved the egg, return to me in this room, and we will smuggle it out. I'm thinking, it, like, how do we compare to the general populace of the we're in? Like, 
well, we stand out because there's a human, for instance. We should be fine. The population of this town is fairly cosmopolitan. As long as you don't do anything to draw too much attention to yourselves, most people don't judge based on appearances here. Any other questions? Um, how do we get to the museum? Look for a large cross-shaped building. Mm. It's near the well in the centre of the town. Okay. It also has a museum above the entrance. Quite useful. Yeah. One of the guys carrying, do they have anything unique about them, or is it just, you know, regular security? That, I'm afraid our agents were not able to find out. Whatever armament the guard carries, they carry them rather disguised. Oh shit, they're professionals. Okay. A lot of very valuable artifacts are maintained within that museum. The council must have paid extra to make sure that they stayed there. Any one of the paintings, for example, would fetch several thousand gold pieces. Which brings me to the matter of your payment, in case it has not been discussed with you before. Upon safe delivery of the crystalline egg, you will each get 300 gold pieces, and you are allowed to keep the proceeds of whatever else you successfully steal. Oh. Indeed. My employer is very interested in acquiring this egg. should say, our employer. Hmm. You know, I thought I left something at home. I don't have my bag of holding. Bugger. Oh, that may be a problem, but there is also a market area in this town somewhere. If you have the funds, perhaps you could find another. Hmm. And hurry, the museum will only be open to guests for another four hours. And a very fancy belt it is indeed. I hope it serves you well. Out of pure uh, the hypothetical possibility, um, how would we contact the local crime syndicate? They run the town. Oh, wonderful. Well, it depends what you mean by crime. Of course, my employers would consider every person within this town to be a criminal of some capacity. I'm thinking if we can't infiltrate the place, we hire a crew of other professionals to stage a overt heist while we do a covert one. We may attempt to do so, but that would come out of your own pocket. Oh, I don't mind that. Well, 
Markets and taverns are always a good place to start looking for syndicate. Thankfully, we happen to be above a tavern right now. Wait, someone had to carry us in crates upstairs? Oh, yes. There Those are a couple of salt. altish dock hands that I slipped a few extra gold to to make sure that they carried you safely. Right, well, I'm good. Humanoid makes such a noise. <laughs> well, good luck. And if you get caught, we don't know one another. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, do you guys head downstairs? Yeah. And Kin is left looking somewhat perturbed by that wink. Downstairs, there are quite a few people. Um, they seem to be celebrating something. There's uh, a couple of people staging like fights over by the um, fireplace downstairs. Uh, there's a small band singing uh, a song called The Age of Aggression. Um, just sort of looking around, would Elder be able to get any idea of what's going on? Uh, roll an insight check, please. Okay. Well, that's to GM. A 28. Yeah. Uh, you, they seem to be in quite high spirits due to some recent, uh, victory or some impending success that the nation is about to go through. Uh, as, mm. you, as you head downstairs, uh, a server approaches you all. Good evening! Welcome to the Siren Song. We are... Offering free shots of our own house vodka tonight. Any takers? Uh, Luca will be handed a very, very small glass, probably smaller than they were expecting, of a clear liquid that nonetheless burns the throat as it goes down. If you will cough afterwards, a small, very small uh, bout of flames would erupt from your mouth. Or I'll not take one afterwards. Neck it. You experience yeah. much the same. Oh, why is this on the house then? Well, it is a celebration of our dear overlords of their current victories. Soon all will be at peace. You do not want to drink to peace? <sighs> it's usually short lived, but sure. All the more reason to drink, my friends. Oh, what about you with the fears? Uh, Ilda is staring at the floor and is almost like blatantly not paying attention to the conversation. After waiting awkwardly for a few minutes for a response, the server will <laughs> nod and go, Okay, well, have a fantastic evening. Hmm. Thanks. And if you need anything else, 
just call my name Martinique. And he walks off to hand some more shots of the vodka uh, to these two fine individuals that are about that are fighting. Uh, they each down a shot and then try and belch out the bigger flame. Why am I picturing a roach situation now? Like, we're going to summon him and he's going to be, like, standing on the roof <laughs> with a tray of shots. Mm. Winds howling. <laughs> sure. Sure. Good luck. Wait, is that the plan? I kind of threw that out as a wild suggestion, but would it may possibly be better to scout the situation out first. The tavern will be there. I'm going to be concerned if it's suddenly gone after a couple of hours, but all right. <laughs> it just got up and left. Well, I'm uh, heading out. <laughs> Tavern's done with this shit. You know, my very first ever long, like long form, a uh, long term D and D campaign. The local tavern was actually a giant mimic. Oh, that's a vibe. Yeah, we watched we watched uh, Luca beat the living daylights out of these two individuals because it's funny. All right, yeah, Luca is more than welcome to approach uh, these two. Uh, the top one uh, identifies himself as Fang. Uh, the bottom identifies herself as Wrath. Aside from the fighters, you see a couple of uh, what look like to be quite well-off merchants uh, sitting in a corner as... is it Ildra? Ilda. 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 Yeah. Um, as Ilda passes by, you hear talk about like stocks and bonds, and it's all you can do to not immediately fall asleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you'd notice that she's a sort of... She looks to be aimlessly wandering around, but um, those who can better rate people, we ought to tell that she's got a purpose to what she's doing. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. That being, that being kind of figuring out what the whole, de all the details of this place is. Just getting, catch catching a bits of conversation here and there. The conversation itself is quite hard to uh, hear over uh, the band, who are currently uh, singing a song that goes Our heroes, our heroes have a warrior's heart <laughs> I tell you, I tell you, the dragon slayer comes And so on uh, mm. The two in the centre seem to be having a quite avid conversation about how uh, mining is a more back-breaking task than woodcutting and vice versa and you will hear just in time for Luca to ask uh, Fang and Arath about a fight and they will both smile at you and Arath will go oh, I won the last one Loser doesn't buy drinks. Drinks are all on the house tonight. Loser buys a steak. Alternatively, you could just give me the five gold. The 
course. Fisticuffs is the most noble way to settle arguments. Or to just show who's the better. Put them up then, love. At uh, this point, uh, Luca, please roll me an initiative check. Uh, you win initiative, uh, so it's your opening move. Essentially, just do anything that you would be able to do in a normal round. As I think, as I know how dangerous Luca can be, can I just have a persistent held action to catch this guy for when he inevitably gets flung towards me so he doesn't pace the wall? She, but yes. Oh, sorry. That's the dude. Okay. Difficult uh, to tell being top down. Yeah, the, the, there is not a massive difference in the, uh, the token size unless you zoom really close in. Uh, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely do that because in one round, Luca just goes pap, 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 and Wrath stumbles backwards and then to the side and then presumably falls into Samantha's waiting embrace. Yep. Uh, Wrath kind of like looks up and she almost blushes as she realises that she's been caught by you uh, but that like turns to fury when she realises that she's been bested uh, she pops back up wipes the blood from her face stumbles over to Luca and extends a hand not in a fisticuffs manner in a handshake manner Wrath will not meet your gaze. Uh, looking instead over towards the counter, uh, where she says, Well, well, they got some good steak on tonight. Well, they do quite a nice sausage bap if you want it. Wrath goes up to the counter, has a few words with the barkeep, uh, who then shouts across the room, And how do you want it cooked, love? Right you are. Uh, a few minutes later, and a uh, steak and another shot of vodka will be put in this seat for you. Uh, Wrath will approach Samantha. Excuse me. Yeah? You really didn't need to do that, but um, thank you for, for catching me. Yeah, no worries. It was more for the safety of this individual, and I point to that person over there. <laughs> yeah, it is such a bugger to deal with head wounds. Yeah, fighting Luca can be a bit much. Nah, it's all right. Oh, you know her. Mm-hmm. Work with her, fought her. About a fifty-fifty win rate. I can hit harder, but she can hit faster, so. She's got a fast fist. Very. 
um, well, if you guys are in town for a few days, we often uh, meet again uh, somewhere out near the farmlands if the tavern ain't accepting us. It's all a bit hush hush, but uh, you should stop by. Uh, yeah, no, I. Might be more Lucas thing than mine. I generally don't crack out the, the guns unless they're needed. You have guns? Rolls on it. <laughs> we could do with someone like you. In our, um, activity group. I'll think about it. You do that. For the record, my name is Wrath. Noted. And she goes back to chatting with her sparring partner. Luca is now uh, quite a ways through her dinner. Anything else that you guys would like to do here? It does count as a short rest. Are you, are you doing okay, Ilda? Pace this room about twice now. Mm, do you know? Yeah. Yes. No. I'm just figuring things out. About around here. It's thought if we were standing around for recreational purposes, then I'd walk around for actual purposes. Fair enough. I mean, she wasn't looking for anything in particular, but... <laughs> Yes, Sam is just checking in with you. Hmm. Like, it's apparent by now. Sam is more or less apparent to this hmm. entire group, irregardless yeah. of the composition. Mainly just because she's so old, seeing that many people. Like, it, someone's got to take care of this lot. Guess mm -hmm. it will be me. <laughs> Laughs at knowing how old Ildra is. Ilda, sorry. Yeah, um... That's... Kind of looks to the other two. Luca just absolutely downing everything. Um... Then... Switches back to Samantha and says, So, are we going to... Look through the place first, or...? See, that would be the smart thing to do. And yes, we should play. Mm. Let's try and keep it quiet. You know, I'd love a, a day where I don't have to hit things. The maid has begun viciously trying to scrub blood out of this carpet. She's looking quite was... passive aggressively towards you guys. <laughs> If worst comes to worst, I can help make us hidden. Oh. I don't know what the maid's complaining about. I stopped it getting on the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> so, you all leave, and mm -hmm. once you hit the area of the town proper, uh, the like dark blue sky is very clear. In a sense, um, it's only marred by the passing shadow of what appears to be a giant octopus. Oh, for the love of... yes, but... bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it was going to be pretty obvious that we're going here. <laughs> I... I... yeah... But at the same time, like, it's like when you, you, you go have surgery or something and you get put under with the gas, right? You know it's coming, 
It still hits you different, though. Fair point. I'm glad that you guys, like, knew it was coming, even though I, like, never mentioned, really. Yeah. Shows that I've been doing something right. Yeah. Uh, so this is the tavern. And this is the museum. We need to cause as much destruction as possible to make it so much more difficult for the brown main group. As you pass by the like walled garden area, you just hear like a very gentle, uh, like high pitched singing. Uh, someone urging plants to grow, coming from within. It would probably be useful, wouldn't it? Don't worry, I'll buy another one, assuming you can. Yeah. As Ilda passes the garden, she lets out a kind of melodic whistle, almost as in response to the song, as she just wanders off. <laughs> the voice that is causing the noises wouldn't um, respond, but several birds that are nesting in the, uh, the tree, the giant tree uh, in the garden, would harmonise with you. Hmm. She just continues walking. If you were to stop at the marketplace, a bag of holding would cost 250 gold. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll mark that off. Oh, that was easier than I thought. Engaging in capitalism. <laughs> Do they have painter supplies as well? Uh, which cost, I think, 10 gold pieces. Does that include things like canvas or all that stuff? Uh, like, bi like, bigger things like canvases would be like uh, 5 gold pieces each. Like a painter's kit, like some paint, paint brushes, uh, maybe even a palette would cost the 10. Alright, I'll mark that off. Because my plan, is, like, my idea is if we just take the paintings, someone's going to notice. So we take the paintings off the frames, roll them up into the bag of holding, and then put fake ones up. You guys want to reproduce paintings? Fake ones? So we bugger the economy in the future. It's brilliant. Are you also I mean, going to like ship a flea to yourself and put it in a box inside of another box and then when it comes you're going to smash it with a hammer and then we're going to smash the hammer with another box it's brilliant 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 I, I see no flaws in this so yeah well, I'll buy basically enough canvas to cover a few paintings and stick it in the bag of holding <laughs> We're going to reverse payday, too. Okay. Did you expect anything else to come out of my mouth, Ren? I let, don't let's admit. know what I expected. Neither did I. Oh, well. It's a well. It's a really nice well that inexplicably has a few guards standing around it. You passed Probably by some get other wells. They didn't have the amount of guards this main one did. How many uses of this do I get? <laughs> oh god. Fireball. Oh god. 
Look, I'm a barbarian. I am the fireball. Uh, <laughs> I'll pop that. Just... Is there any magic coming out of it? There is a fairly strong magical presence. Like, you can't... You're not close enough to sense the presence, but, like, it's essence floats up the well far enough for you to be able to um, sense like a fairly strong kind of uh, ethereal energy. What sort of school is it? Uh, it would be I think Abjuration. Hmm. That's a future problem. That's a not a nose problem, that's a future us problem. <laughs> exactly. As in far in the future. <laughs> Just leave a note saying, don't. <laughs> I... I was about to say prison time, but I suppose a museum is just a prison for art. <laughs> Yeah, this one's above ground this time. Even in the past, <laughs> a prison cannot contain demon. <laughs> I mean, mostly, anyway. Uh, and eventually, you make your ways to the museum. The main entrance uh, lies before you. The balcony that you've heard about is to the south. And Go as public. Just to remind, uh, you do have invitations that say that you are a guest, so you are allowed to enter. And would there be some sort of window above the bench here? Or in the front at all? Yes, yes there is. Uh, yeah. Through that window, uh, you see there's like some kind of, it seems like a ticket office or desk uh, with someone sitting behind who is currently reading. Hmm. I'm just gonna kind of glances in for a second, makes note of it and then looks to the other two. Well, we're allowed in, so... I'd say let's just have a nice look around first, and if someone sees an opportunity, we might want to take it. Hmm. Uh, the front door is locked. Hmm. Well, we tried. Um, Ilda's gonna go up to just knock. <laughs> uh, Ilda and Luca will knock in harmony. Uh, and you can hear like a foot shuffling coming from within. As you hear someone beginning to approach. And if you would all kindly scroll down a fair amount. Oh yeah. We have skipped the middle floor entirely. If uh, you want to move your tokens, you can, or I can. Uh, but yeah. Ticket booth uh, operator unlocks the door. Hello. Hi. Um, we have... Uh... I think, I think it's tickets to look around here. Do you have papers? I sort of roots around um, 
through a shoulder bag, a sort of rough leather shoulder bag she has, and would produce them. And Luca also shoves her invitation. Ah, very well. Have a good evening. Mm -hmm. Honoured patrons. Thanks. And with that, they just head back to the desk and pluck their bookmark from where it was and continue reading. If we need to <laughs> I, I, was, I was aiming for a squiggled voice. <laughs> yeah. If we want to catch the ticket attendant in a continuous feedback loop, we just move the bookmark back pages every time. And they'll constantly go back to that point. So I'm going to worry about the front desk. Uh, if you guys head upstairs, uh, scroll up to see what that looks like. Okay, so we're currently that bit. You may as well reveal like this area because you've technically already seen it with the roof map. In theory, to our left and slightly down should be the staff branch. To the right should be the statues. This road. Uh, bumping into this room. Bumping into that room. Um, Elder would just kind of lean on the balcony and look down into what I presume is like a little garden below. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a couple of swans uh, just swimming quite peacefully on the lake. Um, a couple of what appear to be like dragonflies. Hmm. Overall, a uh, rather quiet uh, evening scene. Just steps back in and continues down this way. If you were to try the store, you would indeed find it locked, but kind of flimsily. Hmm. Are there any alarms or anything within the corridors? What do you mean by like alarms? You haven't like, set any off, but are you looking like, for like the housings of them? Yeah, like magical alarms. 
things, and I'll burn mm. another um... magical awareness. Yeah. Uh, you do indeed see that there is an alarm over the door that you would have entered by. Okay. Uh, there Does... are also several currently inactive, uh, like glyphs of warding. Okay. Against like each of the doors, including uh, the one into the garden. Ah. Do I get an indication that they lead anywhere? Almost like I don't know, like power lines would be the best example. Like, yeah, there seems to be like a general like downwards and like southwesterly vibe. So the the curator's office would seem so. I'll probably point them all out. So I will need to crack into the office to disable those. If we hope to get out of here without triggering anything. No, I could give a shot at disabling them. Um, maybe keep that as a backup. We don't okay. exactly know what's going to happen if you try and fail or try and succeed. For all we know, it's got a feedback loop. Mm. Those of you who are keeping an eager ear out will hear the k-chunk, 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 k-chunk of an approaching heavily armoured individual uh, coming from the northeast. I'm right in thinking we're allowed to be in these corridors. Yes. Okay. From what you've been told. Kachink, kachink. The door swings open. A figure emerges. Good evening. The voice is somewhat echoey through the helmet. Be you guests. Mm -hmm. Mightn't I trouble you to see your papers? Um, Ilda will fish again for the bag for the papers out of her bag, which at this point a bit crumpled, but still valid. <laughs> the guard will uh, examine them each in time, trying like again. Full helmet, can't see any identifiable features of this individual, but, like, you still get this radiating sense of awkwardness and, like, knowledge of Luca's, like, intense stare on them. All good. Have a pleasant trip. Mm -hmm. uh, this individual does not have anything on their belt, except for a very, very large sword. They turn and begin to trundle away. Uh, they open a door to here, so you'd be able to see like this amount of the room as they open the door. And then they kathunk, kathunk away. Would there be any signs kind of denoting what these rooms lead to? Yeah, uh, above this door uh, there is one uh, that says uh, Ancient Weaponry. It's just grasp the handle, turn it. Mm. Um, and this one? Ancient armory. Hmm. Well, seeing as the guy just went through into this room, um, he's gonna see if she can poke her head in here, kind of get an idea of what's inside. Yeah, white dynamic lighting, baby. It seems to be pretty much what it said on the tin. Hmm. Uh, 
Uh, she's kind of looking around. She'll try and make it look like she's admiring things, but um, she's going to see if there's anything of note in particular. There appear to be quite a lot of uh, very ancient um, pieces of armor. Uh, most of them appear to be more decorative than functional. Uh, many of them uh, on the southern wall seem to date back to the Midal Kingdom. Hmm. If you poke your head down, you would see uh, like very artistic statues in the room below. These three here look like very ancient, um, like training dummies. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a uh, a legend um, to the side that the greatest warrior of all of the Madal Kingdom often used these for target practice. Except for the last one, which claims that it was the, uh, once in the ownership of Virgil Cain. A name you of course know. Mm. Uh, but mm. the other two apparently belonged to an individual called Graven the Sword Slayer. takes notes and continues sort of moving around looking around at things at which point you and Luca run into each other once more in this like quiet mezzanine nook from the uh, floor below you hear the ticket booth uh, keeper like deeply engrossed in their book just go oh no, she didn't. <laughs> and Ilda's going to kind of look, kind of squeeze between these chairs and look out the window here, just to see where it leads exactly. Uh, you see the street below uh, that you entered from. Hmm. The uh, curator's office, which is this part of the building here, has a window on this side that you can see. But the windows are like not the big ornate ones. They appear to have quite a few like iron bars over them. You do see that it is connected to whatever you're underneath currently, so there's probably a door somewhere there. And the door that Samantha approaches reads, Skeleton Room, brackets. Mezzanine. 
Ooh. Calcium prison. Uh, as all of you approach, a voice from right next to the door, as you've already walked part way in, might make you jump as another guard blares out, WELCOME! Hi. Please enjoy our surroundings. Mm -hmm. You get a really nice view of this large creature skeleton. You would, of course, know this as a giant uh, ancient rhinoceros. Hmm. I don't know what you mean. Maybe work on the helmets, they're very <laughs> echoey. That is true. But they make us wear them. That, that sucks. You should talk to HR rep about that. What is HR? I want to burn this cover into the... How dare there not be HR? <laughs> Notably, over here, you see a collection of what look like eggs. Yes, that is me. I am the humanoid resource. Uh, as you get closer, Luca, you see that the legend under the eggs reads uh, ostrich eggs, comma, fossilized. These are not the eggs you are looking for. Samantha is clearly rubbing off on Luca as she suppresses the need to flip tables. Immense amount of pride goes through my soul. <laughs> the floor below is revealed if you want to move tokens down there. Yep. Teleport, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> you get a lot closer to this uh, ancient giant rhinoceros. Its claws, uh, its horns, rather, you see, still have like freckles of like dried blood on them. Whatever this thing last killed, still touches of it remain. Um, around the edges of the room appear to be uh, several decorative astrolabes, more decorative skulls, and a stuffed direwolf and dire cat. The, the astrolabe uh, seems to be like something that children are able to interact with. You like push a button to find out what cycle of the moon we're at right now. And it spins around and even goes for a second before you find out that it is a quarter full.
Why am I remembering that video? It's like, guide to being a fossil. Step one, die. Ah, uh, but yeah. As the other two leave the room, uh, they just hear Luca making a machine go the noise of woo, woo, woo. Got an idea. Hmm? Logically, the curator's... When Luke appeared into the curator's office, was the curator in the office? Not that could be seen from the angle. Uh. All you could really see was, like, win like the, the window and, like, a rug. If we can get the curator to give us a guided tour... Because, you know, we're patrons. Then his office, or their office, rather, logically will be free. Then one or both of you can go in and... I haven't thought past that point. <laughs> something, 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 profit. Exactly. Something, 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 something. True. Need in. See, this is the other smart one. Oh, one of the smart ones. Definitely isn't me. As Luca's hand hovers over the door to what they know to be the staff lounge, um, the voice of Kin uh, resonates in your head once more that the invitation is only for the public accessible areas. And if anyone is in the room beyond, that would raise questions. Does she still wish to open the door? <laughs> Just open it, go, oops, sorry! If you were to just bump the door, it wouldn't open. Uh, these rear doors, the same as the balcony above, are locked. Out of interest, do any of you have, like, thieves tools? Anything that would, like, help with a heist. I mean, I have a couple <laughs> things for that, but... If we lived got... in the world of Looney Tunes and you were the roadrunner, painter's supplies would help here? <laughs> I've got navigator's tools in case I get lost in expertise and deception. That's my main tool here, aside from violence. I would ask you guys why you brought these characters, but... Instead, I'm just going to ask your the person who hired you why they hired you. Because no one was insane enough to do this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this door is labelled Fire Exit. Uh, and indeed, this one is labelled uh, Staff Only, Restricted. Uh, 
Okay. Um. <laughs> sure. Um. Do we know where? No. Where... You see, you can't just be brazen about it. You need to think about it logically. Um. Can I can I roll some kind of check to determine where the best place would be to commit arson? <laughs> <laughs> That's a statement. Uh, Luca makes a good point, but if you would like a <laughs> survival, that... I suppose. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go survival with knowledge of the past. Samantha has done this before. Hell yeah, eleven. Oh, that's assistance. Wonderful. Fifteen. Excellent. Uh, you reason that the best place would probably be like some unseen or like covert area where there is like some amount of wood, but it is all inside. Probably one of like the mezzanine. Uh, like lounge areas, like this area that I'm pinging here in the upper floor, if you can see it. Yeah. Strikes you as quite a good place. Uh, you don't think that guards would patrol it regularly? It's got enough wood to start fires with. Um, even got some like easily burning pamphlets on the table over here. Um, but it's close enough to valuable artifacts that someone may worry. Yep, with that expression on my face, I'm going to go over to that room. Okay. Uh, we're going to take our break a little bit early. Because <laughs> Fair. I am bursting. I'm thirsty. Uh, we will meet back here in ten. Hmm. And then things are going to get lit. Yep. So, Samantha heads upstairs. The glint of fire in her eyes. Yep. Oh, and I assume that you head up to that like balcony area. And the other two. Uh if you were caught, uh around like the fire exit area or really if you're seen at all whilst other people presumably evacuate it's gonna look really weird if you guys don't evacuate so what are you gonna do with yourselves um oh sarah's gone hmm. she dropped out she's back So, um, let me see. Woods. Which of the doors there, isn't it? Um, Elder would head outside into the garden. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming. The pond is about four yeah. or five foot deep. Yeah, no, I wasn't worrying about that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going like, to hide underneath no. it. No. Um, so now that I actually look at it, I was imagining that there was like a way between the two halves, but because I thought it was just the other person, but now there's like a thing in the middle, right? Um, so I think what you do is kind of out of sight of anybody. Um, let me see. Just gonna look at specifics of stuff. Um. Oh god. Okay, so headphones are dying, give me a second. <laughs> hey. Um, but yeah, she'd head out and kind of 
sit next to a bench, kind of t tucked between the wall and the bench itself. Okay. You're fairly optimistic about the uh, hiding chances that I'd give you. And then, when she's out of sight of people, um, she would begin to cast Pass Without Trace. <laughs> <laughs> that would certainly help. And Luca has no plans to hide, is just going to go out with the rest of everyone else. Um, am I on the wrong in presuming that uh, there's an entrance to the curator's office past the fire exit, or is that not reflected on the map? You haven't seen an entrance uh, from the outside. Okay. So the entrance might be through the staff entry. What I want to do is I want to hold the fire exit open for people and like be helping people out. Um, and I want to catch the staff room door when the last staff member comes out, and then I want to slip in there after everyone has evacuated. Okay. I like the thought. Because I feel like everyone's going to be panicked and worried about just getting out. They're not necessarily going to be watching for that person that's holding the door. Mm. I feel you. Thanks for saying. Did you make yourself some nice tea in the break? I did. I'm going to make the vocal rest, though. <laughs> this hurts real bad. Yep, that's fair. Uh, Alright. We've got some solid plans, and Samantha is just going to bathe in fire. Does she start it? Yeah, I want to. I'm gonna read this leaflet though first. You know, got to read literature before literature is unfortunately destroyed through the passage. <laughs> or arson in this case. I mean, you could also also just like stow away those leaflets and set fire to the table they're on instead. But Ren, that's theft. <laughs> I have standards. I'll steal priceless art, but not leaflets. <laughs> I'll steal art, but not knowledge. No, that should never have to be stolen. That should be passed through the people. Knowledge should not be gatekept by capitalism. In terms of okay, like, that case. free leaflets, like what is right here? Oh, in that case, I'm taking all of them. Okay. Put them all in the bag of holding. One of them is like some kind of advert for uh, an event evening that is planned um, in a few weeks' time at the museum. Uh, one of them is an is an information like uh, the, uh, what day in the life of Graven the Sword Slayer? And then one is uh, talking about our generous donors, the council. So Samantha spends like a full minute trying to comprehend someone who could kill swords when swords can't be killed. Meanwhile, yeah. her uh, accomplices downstairs are just like waiting awkwardly. Yeah. And then I'll. Um... Are there magical lights? In this room? Uh, not in this room, no. Uh, the only lights uh, come from like the, end, the atrium itself, where there are some magical lights, but they're like above the stairs and stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry, there's one right here. Oh, perfect. I basically... It's not an exact use of uh, wild magic barbarian -ness, but basically I want to rage and just overload the light so that if they were to then, you know, do some CSI stuff here... Oh, the light overloaded. I see. And no one is to blame. Exactly. So, I mean, I will rage... Which means I have to roll on the wild magic table. Excellent. Ignore the fire for now. I'm just placing it there so I can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. Each creature of my choice uh, within 30 feet must succeed on a con save or take 1d12 necrotic damage and I gain 1d12 temporary hit points. Um, Fuck it. I hit myself. For you, you are indeed the only target. Hell yeah. So I take 8 and get 4. <laughs> But I'm raging, so that's still late. <laughs> Cl 
close enough. Oh, I do like that though. I vibe with the fire for a little bit. I'll try and hide somewhere whilst fire's doing fire thing. Like, I'll go hide on the balcony for a bit. And then when I hear people start to run away, I'll, um... Uh, you feel as if you are being extra stealthy right now. You're not oh, quite sure where it's coming from, but you feel like you are passing through this area without a trace. Uh, but as you are walking onto the balcony itself, uh, you start to hear a very subtle, very respectable wee woo wee woo wee woo uh, from the entire building. Um, and you see uh, Luca, people rushing out from the pot room. Uh, they look down at you. Uh, the fire escape door seems to have opened by itself. Which gives you a better understanding of what lies beyond. I assume that you like hold the door open for them, they begin to, like, run. Oh, thank you. Which window, sorry, this one? There are not. Uh, the door to the, like, public canteen opens, and a couple of people emerge. One of them, like, still has a sandwich in his hands. Uh, as the three of them begin to, um, also run away, thanking you as they go past. Samantha, you get a bit worried when you hear the clink, 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 clink. But thankfully, they seem to have a race downstairs. Sorry, can you ping that one again for me? Yeah, no, that was the one that you saw earlier that had bars on it. But you can see a little bit inside. Uh, and one of the guards and the toll booth uh, operator, complete with book, also run out of the rear fire exit door, thanking you. Uh, finally, you hear noises coming from the staff room. Uh, it swings open, allowing you to see inside. You don't see any other individuals that are currently in the staff lounge. Uh, I assume that then you would like to like slip inside it. I assume you shout something along the lines of Get yourself out of danger! Ah. And except for the loud wee woo wee woo wee woos, things seem to be quite quiet now. Until, uh, Luca, you hear uh, footsteps coming from below.
control X does not seem to want to work. Sure, uh, roll me a stealth check with advantage. Or is it a plus? It's a plus 10, isn't it? Pass with that. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, stealth check plus 10. Twenty nine. Um, a few people emerge from the stairs underneath you. Uh, they pause to open up the door, uh, and they rush out. Uh, but one of them, who appears to be a guard, makes sure that the door is locked after he passes through and then begins to rush away. He locks the door with an iron key. He's kind of fumbling though. Um, so like the key just gets like shoved in one of his outside pockets when he's done. If Luca is quick, which I know that uh, that she can be, it is possible for you to take the key off of him. <laughs> Alright, so you would roll over, uh, let's say he gets to about here first, because you'd be anticipating this, and then please roll me a sleight of hand. You have one saucy iron key in your grip. And this guy runs away oblivious. And now all appears to be quiet. And those hiding in various places. <laughs> Me neither. I can't believe that works. I can't believe any of this has worked, but... There we are. Um, now you all feel more comfortable breaking your hiding places. I assume yeah. Luca um, communicated to you where she was thinking of going. Um. Elda will almost move like a shadow as she sort of runs through into the room. She providences her way inside. <laughs> Not quite. I have become the very verb I swore to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Luca. Bibbidi bobbidi. This key is now my property. There are like remnants of what appear to be like a uh, little uh, afternoon tea, a few like little cakes, and some uh, two cups of like empty uh, that are empty but have like tea dregs. Uh, along the bottom of them. Uh, the cakes are lemon and raspberry flavour. They are very small, very dainty. You could eat all of them and still feel quite hungry. Um, one thing, would there be any like paintings or just like um, something that could cover the window? Uh, there is a painting directly behind uh, the curator, uh, the, the curator's desk. Uh, it appears to show a man in like an all khaki, um, like trousered, like explorer suit with some kind of odd bucket shaped hat with a point down the middle, uh, looking quite noble, surrounded by jaguars and lions and a dragon flying above. 
Mm. The mustache is particularly fur fierce. Um, I think Ilda would kind of like try and take it off the wall, and then place it in front of the window. Just kind of lean it against, kind of make it short, make so people who look in can't really see us as easily. Sure thing. Uh, you pick it up, and underneath is revealed a switch. Huh. Well, I should take note of that painting here. Um, and like then... Curtains. That's a very good point. I didn't hear that. Were there curtains? <laughs> yes. But it's like the, the lacy, like, trans... Lucent oh, yeah. type of curtain that don't actually have any function. You may oh, as well. Get pull, those get pulled over as well. <laughs> it's a little more obfuscation. Well, <laughs> now you don't have to look at that like god awful self serving painting, so. Yeah. When you said it was a painting, I thought it was a painting of the curator behind the desk of the curator, so if you stared at the curator, you'd just see two of them. Um, kind of. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, we definitely from, from the rear window you don't like see uh anyone. Yeah. Um, I was mainly covering this window because people were running out that way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just pointing out for Luca's sake. Yeah. Alright, I'm just gonna peek down the stairs. Uh the stairs go straight but then start to curve. Hmm. I just wanna double check. If I I will burn another Awareness. Is the switch on the wall connected to all the stuff in the corridor, the doors and stuffs? Uh, no. The connection appears to be going downwards. Ah, could we need to unlock it. Let's just double check them. You were, uh, just a reminder for the intel, you were told that the vault had, like, its own lock that was operated from somewhere on the ground floor. You assumed that your intel assumed it was in the curator's office. Hmm. Uh, well, just gonna give that, like, unless there's any warning not to, Ilda will just give that a quick flick. Uh, from below you hear a quiet grinding noise. With that, do we oh. go down the stairs? Yep. Fucking hell. That was a noise. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> I always worry about it. Well, that's my own deal. Uh, alright. You follow the grinding. And you are in a much smaller room than you anticipated. Um, there is a pipe that seems to be leading in, a couple of magical lamps, and like it, a door that like looks similar to um, like revolving glass doors that you've seen a few times before. But this one is like made of metal, and the segments can only fit one person in each. Kind of like an airlock sort of system. Pretty much. You assume this is probably where that guard that you saw what would have been stationed. Right. Go ahead, go first. It very slowly, like, shudders round. Oh boy. Actually, I'm just gonna... Polygon reveal, that'll be the quickest. There are facets. And eventually, all three of you emerge in what appears to be half research, uh, half storage area. Uh, notably, you see the vault door. Uh, there is a thick, like, the circumference of it is nearly half a foot, like thick iron bar 
that is very slowly retracting up into the ceiling. Which is the source of the <laughs> that started when you flicked the lever. All right. I will go stand roughly here because I've just measured it out. I will pop final use of magical awareness to detect as much of the magical stuff as I can. Oh lord, well there's like a huge amount of like magical spell scrolls that seem to be emanating from uh, the unknown sections. I assume you guys can see like the labelling on top of these um, mm -hmm. bookshelves, right? Awesome. Um, yeah, in the unknown section there's like there's all schools of magic uh, that are brew like just coming from there. This um, organ is also magic. And there is something hidden inside this statue which is giving off a strong enchantment vibe. Begin starting to point things out. Uh, you also get a, like, a strong sense of magic coming from behind the vault. Uh, but as it's in total cover, all you know is there's something there. Yeah. Okay. I will point all the magical things out and then begin starting to stuff spell scrolls into this bag. Um, I think Ilda would look over the statue, see if she can figure out anything. Uh, please roll investigation. All right, I'm okay, Shep. Ooh, Rob, do you have? Uh, uh, Ilda gets the sense that there is like something, like imprisoned within this statue, uh, which is magical in nature. Um, you see that the statue itself seems to have been like almost molded around like another figure hmm. uh, Luca very carefully cuts out this quite snazzy painting of a fancy looking lady uh, rolls it up I assume and can either stuff it in her bag or bring it over to Samantha for storage I will, once I finish storing bags, uh, do that to the both of the party members. The first one, so you get a D3 on... Is it just once or is it continuous? Whenever. Yeah. So it, it, maybe it's just reading properly, not understanding properly. Is that just for one roll? It's like a one-time bless, or is it a continuous bless uh, for ten minutes? Yeah, the use of whenever says to me it's continuous. Okay, so you all, you both have a D... Oh, screw it, I'm going to give it to myself then, as well. So we all have a D3 bonus to yeah. that. Yeah, it's like a, a one-number shitter guidance. Yeah, I mean, it's free. Or I could restore a spell slot, but one caster... <laughs> so, yeah. have a D3. Uh, so, if there's, I mean, there's, you don't really get the sense that there's much more that you can gain from just investigating the exterior of the statue, but if you want to add a D3 to it, Ilda, I feel like that'd be fine. Okay, um, I'm in the way as well. Okay. <laughs> a 23 doesn't yield much more than the 22 does, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah. like, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like kind of discerning that this statue was molded around whatever's inside. She's kind of like, probably she's kind of thinking that we probably shouldn't touch that, because anything that's molded around something magical in nature probably is meant to keep it inside for a reason. <laughs> Can Samantha cast any spells? No. Then you have got a lot of spell scrolls that are uh, 
a big mystery. Um, yeah. I mean, I know what schools they are. Because of magical awareness. But, yeah. Not a caster in this life, unfortunately. Yeah. And, like, overall, you, like, you would get a good amount of each of the schools. You, you, I you want a balanced breakfast. Yeah. But then cold breakfast as well. Um, I think that counts, Sarah. Well, it depends, really. I'm assuming the feat is magic initiate. Oh, Fate Touch. So, first level divination or enchantment spells you'd be able to understand, but um, any others would be a mystery wrapped in an enigma. Uh, and I am currently trying to bring up like a complete list of things that those would be. I think most of the scrolls are in the bag of holding. Uh, so you'd get like a scroll of uh, Bane, Charm Person, Heroism, Identify, and Sleep. Do you need me to repeat that or are you good? Cool. Can Idra uh, cast any spells? Ilda, sorry. A lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to try and think of you as like the Fire Emblem ponytail lady. Hel Hilda, because then I'll get it roughly right. Okay. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you'd probably be able to find something you could cast. Um, I mean, while waiting for the vault to open, she would kind of aimlessly wander around, maybe pick out a couple that she's interested in. What's the highest level you can cast at the moment? I'm assuming yes. four? Oh, fifth. I can give you a list of seven spells that you can cast. All right. Uh, ready? Mm hmm Anti-life shell. Blight. Uh, also charm person. There are two of those. Daylight. Greater restoration. Gust of wind. And reincarnate. I think that's seven. Uh, kind of looking over them all. Um, you just sort of give them a glance over, and you probably take the greater restoration. Um, but I think for the rest, she just let Sam shove them in the bag. <laughs> Okie dokie. Uh, the vault bar has now fully retracted into the ceiling. I'm gonna draw my weapon. Because this does not seem... This seems too easy for the amount of stuff in here. 
maybe I'm running off adrenaline because I did set a room on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Luca, uh, emboldened by her ability to evade damage when it comes, rolls open the vault door. There are many chests within, even a row of uh, scrolls on bookshelves. And there is a door. Uh, the door is currently locked. There is a key slot. Unfortunately, no, this key does not work. Luca gives up. What do you guys do? Hmm. I'll have a look at the door first. Is it trapped? Magically or none? Not that you can see. Wonderful. Does the door look breakable? Yes. It is a metal door, but the metal appears thin as you give it a testing, like, tap. Okay. I'll let Ilba, hopefully I got that right, mm -hmm. try something before I juggernaut charge this door. Uh, she will just kind of stare at you blankly, seemingly waiting for you to do something. <sighs> okay. I'd like to, hang on, wait, 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 hang on. I'm going away from anything that we want to nick. I'd like to rage. <laughs> so, oh lovely, it's a good thing I moved out the way, because, um, tentacles go vibe. So, <laughs> I take three, I get two, such is the trend, but my hit points, oh wait, my hit points go to two because I had them, but stuff. Uh, and then I come running around the corner because I can double my movement the, on my first bonus action as a rage. So I just go right into the door, Tokyo Drift style. Before uh, you do that, as like Luca gives up and starts like randomly opening chests, uh, you find a chest that is filled with like ancient gold coins. Ooh. I'm not gonna lie, having Payday Sam tra soundtrack in the background is upping my immersion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is before like Sam would have left to go rage. Uh. In total, Luca will insist on having the bag open and will put in, uh, like, roughly 2,000 gold worth of coins. 
Yeah, I give the bag to Luca before I go off and rage. And you knock into the door. Pachum. No, oh, probably more stairs. <laughs> My God. Oh. Uh, I'm assuming that stairs are headed downwards. Mm -hmm. Do the stairs look removable? <laughs> what? You heard me. I heard you, I didn't understand you. Look, if we've stolen everything, my next port of call is stealing ah. the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> the stairs, um are bolted uh, onto the floor on this level and the caverns below are uh, with respectively on each level eight heavy bolts. If you are somehow able to remove those, I suppose technically you could move the stairs. You could also burn them. Oh, that's an option. Maybe later. A work to do. You uh, walk down the stairs and the air gets immediately colder and more humid. Um, you find yourselves in a very thin cavern. Um, and all the meanwhile, all you can hear is this... Uh, it's quite quiet, but the further down the cavern uh, like area that you go, um, the louder it gets. It's just this sad... Uh, uh, of someone singing beyond. And finally, you emerge, and you see a turtle looking at you. Um, casually approach turtle. Uh, the turtle gives you all a suspicious look, but more importantly, um, as you approach, you see on the very top uh, of the stone platform is an egg. That is a wall that you're in right now, Luca. And Sam. Um, so, I can walk up, I can run across water without falling, because of monk shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, would you like to run across? Yeah, I would like to run across the water. <laughs> and then, uh, you see in, like, this area here, there's, like, a change in height, which is about five feet. Um, I can also run up vertical services without difficult terrain or falling. Uh, and at this point, the like sad aria noise has gotten quite loud. Uh, and you see a long snake-like figure with the torso and head of a woman idly drawing patterns in the water. I would like to stealth! <laughs> Uh, you may, but you can't add a plus 10. Unless, um, you'll, Elder, il Yeah, got yep, it. <laughs> yeah, would like to go with. Um, as Luca just, like, full-on Jesus runs across the water, um, Luigi Elder's gonna... Runs, thank you. That too. Um, 
Like, is there like a shallow bit of the water around here? Yeah, uh, basically like the first five feet away from the shore are quite shallow. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna like slowly wander into the water just a bit. And then uh, I'm going to use. Uh, where is it? Nope. There. I mean, past that trace lasted an hour. It was just still half. Oh. Um. So, sorry, Mr. Turtle, but you are now have you now have to make a save, or else you're afraid of me. Um. <laughs> as basically, what happens is she wanders into the water, then she sort of disappears in a puff of snow as all that's left is her glowing bright red eyes that stare down this turtle and then she reappears right here <laughs> oh, also be stealthing as soon as I land as well. I so, cannot find a yeah. dedicated sheet for a turtle, and frankly, I um, didn't anticipate <laughs> this happening. Uh, so I'm going to use a different sheet and just um, ignore that. And it is a what save? Wisdom. Yeah. That's a success. <laughs> the turtle makes it! <laughs> A very sturdy turtle. <laughs> the turtle regards the uh, puff of snow uh, with a cool uh, glance of its own. Uh, just ambles up towards Sam and gives a face of like, "Do you have any fish on you?" <laughs> Do I have any fish on me? It's a good question. You've got like rations. Possibly some of them are fish. Okay, I'll hold out rations in one hand and a lighter in the other. I want to see whether this turtle would like to commit arson. <laughs> Is the lighter lit? No. So it might not understand what a lighter is unless flame is coming from it. Okay. I'm assuming it's like a Zippo lighter type thing. <laughs> of course, in the, in the past future we can have that. Yeah. I will just give the turtle rations. The lighter uh, is mine. I mean, if you give, if you present a choice uh, to the turtle, it's gonna uh, raise itself on its back feet and point towards both options. Oh my god! I give both. Firstly, it chews on the rations, and as they're still like sticking out of its mouth, uh, the turtle will take the lighter. Uh, in one hand and like flick it open with its other very not suited to this task paw and you see a uh, delight on its face as it just like very carefully ambles on its two back legs over to here and like creates fire from some dried moss they grow up so fast anyway back to the plot uh, so with Ilda um, teleporting across the water, um, that means that uh, Luca is able to make a stealth check with advantage, and Ilda, you now also hear this like quite loud. Uh, sad music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's only a plus ten. <laughs> no advantage. Um, oh, I see you already rolled your uh, yeah. your stealth. I was too mm -hmm. focused on uh, on um, turtle arson. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, a 33 is uh, you feel pretty stealthy. Do you wish to approach the egg?
the egg is crystalline. It appears that the intel that you heard about it not being naturally produced seems to have been a lie. There is clear signs of like nest making behaviour you assume from the figure below. Do you wish to steal her child? <laughs> Luca appears, uh, Ilda, to be having a crisis of conscience and kind of summons you up to the top platform as well. It takes you a while, but you are able to climb up the various uh, stalagmites. Oops, I already realised I was muted. Um, oh. <laughs> so just kind of lean in and say, "Well, will we will get anything at all if we don't get this." Um, I was just going to, Lucas explaining this sort of stuff, I'm just going to peek around, get a better look at this individual here, kind of trying to figure out their general temperament. Right now they seem depressed. Hmm. Am I able to figure out... A reason for that at all? Uh, sure. Roll like an insight check. The DC is going to be kind of high since you haven't technically interacted, but that's still a good yeah. roll. Um, because things don't like being held prisoner. Yeah. Hmm. And I just want to check, this, does like the pathway up here actually exist? It doesn't. It, this is yeah, the okay. best map I could find. Just a double check. That's fair. Uh, um, I can block it off to be a little bit more like...
Okay, so I think by silent agreement, we've all agreed we're gonna maybe help help kidnap this being because we all feel bad. <laughs> yeah. I think we do need to fake make the egg. There was an ostrich egg upstairs. The cavern that we're in, does it have like crystals and the like around it, like on the ceiling in the water? Yeah, there's like some um, vaguely shiny looking crystals. Could we, in theory, then take the crystals from here, take the ostrich egg, and try and create a replica of this? Because they said it was not naturally produced. So we just need to make it look manufactured. Ooh, 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 or I could paint a rock to look like it, if we can find a rock of the same, like, approximate size and shape. I think it would definitely, I think the painting will add the touch, but we need the texture as well. But yeah, I'm not walking over this water. You're fine where you are with your little, um... Acolyte. Yes. Uh, but yeah, there are plenty of like rocks that you could use to like fake an egg if you want to steal the egg. But what if jailbreak though? No, I'm saying jailbreak, and the entity, the individual, keeps their legitimate egg, and we hand the employer a fake egg. Mm. You know, best of both worlds, what they don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> if they find out what they're going to do, rat us to the authorities, that they hired us to break into a prison, prison, the museum. I mean both, apparently. Prismium. <laughs> Prismium. Yo, that sounds like a dope dungeon. I would just <laughs> like to like remind you guys that this is once again a prison underground. Yep. <laughs> Demon? Yep. I'm counting on you to uh uh edit the famous meme <laughs> with new art. <sighs> Give me a sec. You the OG. I guide others to him they cannot possess. <laughs> like Sonny's ancestor here. My god. I've done it. <laughs> it it all makes sense. It was Sa it was Samantha that caused Sonny into being. Wait, do you even know who Sunny is? Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, you've, you've watched some videos because you're cool. Some, and I had it explained to me in character very briefly by Solus, who's done a wonderful job at briefly explaining some things, including but not <laughs> limited to his dad. I think I know more about Solus's dad than Providence knows about her own father, which is about accurate. For someone that's like very ashamed of their father, Solus sure does like talking about him. It's a complicated relationship, okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, are we talking to this snake lady? Prisoner? Um... I will begrudgingly make my way up. Hating every damn second of it because I have to swim. The water is pleasantly warm, but also kind of slimy. Yeah. Um. But you're not a, your new turtle friend has just started uh, trying to set fire to the slime on top of the water. Shit. <laughs> 
It is no. laughing in the way that only a turtle can, which is like. Please, please don't set it on fire, Mr. Turtle. Not yet. <laughs> it just kind of pauses with like the Zippo lighter like an inch away from the, the surface of the water. I'll give you a signal when you can do it. <laughs> it wags its tiny little tail and it snaps its beak in acceptance. I miss. I, I I feel like Samantha is one of those people that would like shake herself off like a dog when she was wet without consent. There's just steam. <laughs> right. That also works. Uh. So what next? Uh, do you want me to go be diplomatic? Um, well, I'm not a good at it, so... I... okay. No, I'd rather not. Okay. Um, I'm not stealthing at all, so I'm basically just going to wait away from the egg so I'm not a visible threat. And I'm just going to wait until the individual sees me. Okay. That would be easier, like, somewhere around here where there's a visual connection. Yeah, I basically just... I want to make it clear that I'm not a threat. I want to talk. There's a a bit of a lull in the like the chords. She seems to just be idly humming, and she uh, like turns her head. Her whole body kind of crawls around to you, and the second that she sees you, like panic just registers all over her face, and immediately she just like slinks into the water. And like all you can see is just like her eyes, just watching you carefully. Don't wanna do anything. Just wanna talk, and I'll visibly take the weapon not out of the sheath, but completely off my back, and put it out of arm's reach of myself, so I can't just run and grab it. Okay. Still keeping my hands visible. You wanna get out of here? Because this doesn't look like a fun place. I mean, I know I don't like it. I prefer the sun. You are not with my captors. On the contrary, we're trying to screw them over quite a lot. We've done that quite a bit already. You are not here to steal more of my babies. Hold on, they kidnap more? They have had me producing their babies. <laughs> producing well, their slaves for many, many years. Dozens uh, of hands. Yeah, no, we're getting you the fuck out of here. Yeah, we're not we're not having that in the slightest. There seems to be some kind of trust. Uh but please roll a persuasion check. Okay. With my plus two. Plus a D three. Uh so that <laughs> oh hang on, with that with a D six, yeah, so I'll roll a D four, ignore a four, so that's uh twenty four. Bit of math there. Uh, this figure swims more towards you. Me and my baby. Oh, yeah, no, totally. Is there any more? Or is it just the one there? My race can only produce one every year. 
Okay, fair enough. Just double checking. Uh, do you want to grab? Yes. Cool. So she like kind of snakes her way, uh, pun not intended, uh, up like the rock wall and just like wraps the egg like around her tail. Lovely. Uh, just so you're completely aware, I'm with two other associates. <laughs> they're in the pr they they're as trustworthy as I am. They're in the process of really screwing over the people who screwed you over. Speak! Pardon? Tell me your plans! Oh, right. Well, we plan to get you out of here and then burn the entire museum to the ground. No, clans with a C! Names! Oh, sorry! <laughs> I, I've got water in my ear, still, full steam. <laughs> Sam, Ilda, and Luca. Sam, Ilda, Luca. Hey, Neva. Oh. Right, that's... Um... Yeah, they're in the process of... Looks over. Hiding. Alright, oh, yeah. I thought they were also making the fake egg. Yeah, I'm making a fake egg. <laughs> the feg. <laughs> Just realise what that sounds like. Mind. So they're like they've they've got they've got this just like round piece of of rock and they are just painting the crap out of it. I'm using that like silvery paint that makes everything look pearlescent. <laughs> and then kind of like smashing bits of crystal to it to give it texture. All the paint is still wet. This, Do you think you um, could make another one? Like Naga uh, approaches you and just like uh, looks looks down make sure you sparkle texture important yeah i mean i like kind of the egg is kind of like it's kind of i'm working on it while it's on a piece of rock so it's kind of open and i like you know kind of gestures towards the paint it's like yeah go, go for it <laughs> you make a, a good rendition overall Can I roll with advantage since I'm getting help from the Naga? Mm -hmm. You've also got your D3 still. Nice. And with a non nat 20, uh, Neva looks at it and then looks down at the one wrapped around her tail. And has to double check to make sure that the one that she's holding is still the right one. Very good. Yeah, you just hold yours and I'll hold this one and that way we don't get them mixed up. <laughs> mm. Right. So what's our exit point? Back the way we came, the place is... We, we fire alarmed it, so place is empty. Yeah. Alright, let's go. We might want to escape from a different exit, on account of our friend here. It's out a window. That's true. She kind of like slithers round and like drops into the water. And again, just running across the water because I'm cool. <laughs> um, teleport. And shout into the shallows. <laughs> <laughs> Just out of sheer curiosity, um, there's nothing here that you want to keep get, because that that turtle's going to destroy all the evidence that we were ever here. <laughs> Do you not want to come with us, Egg? She seems to be addressing the turtle. 
who ha lighter still in hand, flame still lit, looks at all of you, looks at the lighter, and nods their head vigorously. Wait, does Turtle want to come with, or does Turtle want to stay and watch the flames? Uh, kind of both, but more wants to leave. Understandable. I'll wait until our friend has gone out, and then give the Turtle the go-ahead. Uh, very specifically, this is the name and the spelling that was given for the turtle. Um, so with that, I assume that you guys all leave. That'd be nice. You... You're probably grabbing more loot on the way back up, just like stuffing stuff in the bag. Yeah. Are you leaving like one fake egg like here, or are you just taking the one that you're going to? No, us? no. I, I, the, the fake egg is for our employer. Cool. I mean, they're going to know we robbed this place. Yeah. And we also, I also kind of want our employer to know that we robbed this place. <laughs> yeah. Pr proof of job completion. Yeah, proof of job completion. Exactly. We weren't told to cover it up. That's fine. Um, we weren't paid the cover it up surcharge. There are like other like necklaces and things hidden in the vault that you can grab pretty easily on your way out. Ah, uh, oh. screw it. Can I try and rip the staircase off the wall? I'm not taking it with me because it won't fit in the bag of holding. You just want to. I just want to make chaos. sure. Oh, p yes. Uh, sure. Please roll me an athletics check with advantage. Oh boy, here I go advantaging. With it, <laughs> with it, with my D three as well. So that's a three. Oh my so gosh. That's, so that's thirty eight. You are holding more stairs than anyone ever thought possible. Do you cast them back onto the cavern floor and watch them collapse into splinters? Yes. That's As we're fine. leaving here, also I want to, um, oh no, we, uh, we didn't lock the upstairs door behind us, right? The door to the staff room? No. Nope. Okay, so I want to jam the door to the staff room into this lock and then break the key off in the lock. Okay, that sounds like a next map problem. What is that? <laughs> it's the stick. <laughs> I think that's the highest athletic roll I've ever rolled. It's, it's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, once everyone is through, I'm gonna break off this key in this lock. Should, do we have, like, is there a pen on the desk? Yes, several. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, like, the most permanent, permanent marker I can find and cartoonify this portrait before I leave. Are you going to draw, like, a cartoon moustache over its real moustache? Oh, yeah. Like, curly <laughs> one as well. Like, evil moustache. Uh, monocle, uh, like, some kind of speech bubble saying, I am poop. Yeah. And then I'll let Luca break the lock with a key. Uh, lock is broken. Uh, just FYI, if you guys were to step into the corridor, you would hear like the sounds of like organizings of some form of fire prevention agency to the south. Um, this window we confirmed doesn't have bars on it, so I'm just gonna bust the window. Yeah, but that is where everyone is currently organizing. Oh, the organization out back. Okay, okay, okay. okay. It, I thought 
might make more sense to open the window back in the curator. Well, I was gonna say these windows. These there are windows here. Are the people organized back here? Uh, yeah, there are no bars, and there's no one there. All right, I'm gonna bust one of these windows. <laughs> Or just open it if they just open, but otherwise I'll bust them. They are just flat panes, unfortunately, but uh, they don't take much to just bust open. I just punch straight through a pane of glass. <laughs> nice. Uh, there is a way out. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Drag the rug up and, you know, the thing where you put the rug at the bottom so you're oh, not yeah, yeah. climbing through glass. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, with that, I'm assuming everyone is able to get out. Mm-hmm. Wait through the darkness. <laughs> oh, is that still dark? Let's see. Yeah. I'm gonna... Can I break... Broke the lock here. Uh -huh. I'd like to break the lock here as well. There's no lock for say. Um, but, but, like, you can you can shove a bookcase in front of it. Wedge, yeah. your, wedge your chair against the door, that kind of thing. Well, I'll I'll put the bookcase there and then wedge the chair against the bookcase. <laughs> you feel that the second step was very necessary and helpful. Of course. Uh, and you feel like it is a, a job well done. And with that, with your spoils, do you all slither off into the night? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what time is it? Uh, it would be around like 9pm now. Okay. I think first and foremost we help our snack friend get somewhere safe. The safest place you can think of is somehow helping them like get to like the submarine dock to the south so that they can escape into the lake's waters. Or possibly hiding in like the fountains of the park. Yeah, I would say let's just help them get out. So let's take them to the docks. Yep. Just so you know, if um, Pass Without Trace would go down, I would just recast it. Okay. Because I have a craft on spell slots. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the five of you slither mm -hmm. around to the south uh, where there are like a few ships um, that are docked but being quite late at night there's not much activity uh, there are like several like maintenance airlocks uh, that are dotted with like like kind of like old timey style diver suits you know with like the, the the spherical helmets oh yeah those yeah, yeah. and they don't appear to have like a lock on them per se but uh like some of them they can't be open they can't both be opened We can escape through there? Probably? Mm -hmm. Uh, Neva with her long tail slash body wraps the three of you up in a tight hug to the point where you're kind of worried that she's going to asphyxiate you for a second you, sir, have helped us get freedoms we never thought. We will never forget this. Use a name my child after you. Tries to figure out the logistical order of which name comes first. That doesn't actually sound half bad. We spit for it out. 
A species have long gestation time. Yeah, best best of luck. Uh, oh, egg? That's the last of my or egg decent. on the other uh like stands up again on its like hind legs uh and offers back the lighter. I will take it and nod. It kind of like flexes its primitive hands and you see a fire burning in its eyes. My god. Uh, and with that, they both slither into the airlock. Uh, and after a few minutes, uh, you see their shadows passing over the dome. We did a good thing. I think. Uh, with that, you all begin to head back to the tavern. And as you're doing so, a alarm begins to play throughout the entire city. This is an evacuation warning. All citizens of Kumtawa, please head to the underground bunker for temporary shelter. Repeat, all citizens of Kantawa head to the bunker for emergency shelter. And the sky begins to brighten. As something begins to grow closer and make contact with the glass on the top. Many people are already streaming out and heading towards the bunker. Do you guys go there or towards the submarine dock? Considering how fast this thing is moving, I, I would go to the bunker. Yeah. I'll, I will stay out and make sure that the other two go in before I do. They do indeed uh, rush towards it, as do quite quickly hundreds of others. And just as you're descending into the bunker, you see um, the glass dome finally crack. And whatever this bright, shining light is that was anchoring its way through, it hits directly into the well in the centre, and water rushes in. Uh, the doors to the bunker snap shut behind you, and you are left in a massive underground bunker with thousands of others that are crying and worrying and kind of damp. Thank you for attending this one shot. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> the universe just outdid me and committed mega arson. <laughs> With water. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> hydro arson. Oh, that's a terrifying concept. <laughs> Oh no! Te like if you think first off, thank you, Ryan. A lot of fun. Oh, yeah, thanks. Really enjoyed it. Just imagine it, right? Saturday group, we go through this bunker and we just see three people standing there in a sea of corpses. It's like we're fucking terrified of them. <laughs> all they see, all, all they see is like a hundred corpses with like 
Luca sized fist marks in, in the skull. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a thousand years between the two. Who knows what's going to happen? Oh, God, that's. Ah. I'm glad that you all enjoyed this uh, one shot slash uh, in depth lore dump. I mean, we haven't got to worry about destroying the evidence. <laughs> That's good. I didn't think I would just like let you guys play a regular day of con of the uh, life in the Kantawa Abyss, did you? Honestly, kinda. <laughs> the next one shot's just gonna be Bunker Simulator. Yo! Elder and Samantha lived to meet the current party. It's just like, what happened? Ah, what didn't happen? Fact, what I find funny is the fact we still have that fake egg. <laughs> <laughs> like, Samantha's just cradling it in her to arms. To be fair, just... <laughs> we just performed one of the greatest acts of historical preservation that this timeline has ever seen because we stole a bunch of shit and now it's safe with us. Fair point. <laughs> Technically, yeah. Uh, the museum would have, would have been utterly wasted um, in the flood. Ooh. So... But both to the flood and spoiler thing. Yeah. <laughs> so overall... Good job, 10 out of 10. Yay. IGN 10 out of 10 would set on fire again. And people say arson doesn't work. Exactly. <laughs> They've exactly. clearly not tried it themselves. <laughs>